So these are the Perry Street projects. Um, it was once upon a time ago affordable housing. It's since been condemned so nobody can legally live here. Uh, we know for a fact that there are several people that choose this as their nighttime residence. They break in through open windows and open doors and they create their own little homes here. Um, we actually do outreach here for the point in time count. Um, so I was here at 5 o'clock in the morning this year on a Friday in the middle of January yelling in windows trying to see if I could get anybody to come out to be counted. Uh, we count how many homeless are living on the streets in Erie County every year in January. So that's a little bit about what this place is. So it used to be affordable housing and now it's not anymore. <laughs> we see that happen a lot, but the affordable housing just kind of gets swept by the wayside. Like what's happening over on the west side in the Shoreline Apartments. If any of you guys are familiar with those. So it's another affordable housing complex which they're tearing down to build million dollar condos. So a lot of people lost their homes. Everybody had to be out September of last year. It's another place we have a lot of active people living. We have to worry about when the city does for eventually condemn these. We have to really hope that the somebody that's supposed to check the buildings did their job. Otherwise, we lose our clients. That's happened, where they tore down houses and later find the body. That's real life out here. <laughs> I've actually reached out to the cops to ask them to go through some of these buildings with us and they came back to me with, I suggest you don't, that's trespassing, we'll take care of it. They put up new boards and people found new ways in. So it doesn't really help, <laughs> unfortunately. So you guys want to know what my lifestyle is about? Mm -hmm. yeah. us, being, us being homeless. Alright guys, I'm going to explain this to you guys. Being homeless, it's not easy. Food is not easy, but there's a lot of soup kitchens they can, you can go to, but you gotta walk it to soup kitchen. Between yesterday and today, um, we had our things stored somewhere outside um, where nobody could see it, and the city came by and they seen it, and they didn't bother to ask questions, they just took it. So like when I leave here, I gotta go to the police station to go try to find our Belonging. How long have you been homeless? Uh, about a year. How is life on a day-to-day -day basis? Tough. I gotta get up, go to dialysis, stab needles in my arm, clean my blood three times a week. I uh, have to get up. I have to. Uh, I'm around a bunch of alcoholics. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink at all. So everything they say, they lie, they cheat, they rob from me too. How do I live? I got tarps. I got blankets. That's how I sleep. Even through the winter and through the rain. That's how I sleep. It might be scary for you guys, but for me it's not. Because I've done I've been here for a long time doing it. Do you feel you are being dehumanized and treated less than Less. As someone experienced homelessness, yes, I do feel a little bit of um, being treated differently. Yeah. They don't give too stuff about too much stuff about us. I'm blessed because at least the dialysis center, I can clean myself up, take a shower. I don't have to smell like a homeless person. You know. What are your survival skills? My tenacity. I clean out. Won't give up attitude. That's how I get through with this. I've been doing this for 12 years. Look at my arm. I lost my kidneys in a car accident. I was a union fitter making $65 an hour. And now I'm down uh, the town of Hamburg screwed me over on the lawsuit because they ticketed me because the woman that hit me was a wife of a judge in Boston. How do you feel about the animal? Depressing. Most of the time, depressing. Sometimes there's a highlight once in a while, you know, but most of the time it's depressing and aggravating, frustrating. What are the highlights? Uh, when I'm first in line at the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the most common reason that people become homeless? I think finance, probably financial. Well, I can't really speak on everybody, but I think it's mostly financial, finances, lack of money, lack of I mean, it's all a trickle, trickle effect. That's how I became homeless. I lost my job. 
I had Section 8, and I couldn't keep up with my part of the rent. And I went to social services for help, and they could only do a little bit for like one month, and then if you break something on the lease with Section 8, they could terminate. So once my landlord decided to evict me for non-payment or a partial payment, it was just a downward spiral after that. I was running from this Muslim guy from Yemen, and I don't want to. And I went for hernia surgery. He wouldn't do repairs in my apartment, so I, I wasn't going to pay him rent until he repaired my, you know, who wants sewage dripping on me? I went for the hernia surgery, and at the time I got out of the hospital, he'd already got me evicted, three-day eviction on me, and threw all my stuff out. It's amazing how they're pushing people out. That's just my own personal opinion, so it doesn't mean other people have to say it. Just I like to see Americans in America own American, you know, not these ones coming from other countries and taking over. I, I would want people not to judge homeless people the way that they do, like dirty or drug it. Because, oh, they're, okay, there's they're, 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 some of that. But then there's a majority of us that are not. And that we're out here, we're trying to get a job, we're trying, you know, we're doing everything we can, working with social services. So I just think that's a big misconception that people are out here drinking and doing drugs all day. That's not the case at all. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you work at the Haven House? I do. I'm the program manager at Haven House, which is Erie County's only licensed domestic violence shelter. Do you think the homeless are being dehumanized? I think we've gotten better at humanizing the homeless over the years. I still think we have a long way to go. I think there's a lot of judgment that goes in when someone becomes homeless, but the reality is we're all, we, most of us are one paycheck away from not having anything. So I think if we did a lot more better understanding of the homeless and not judging them so much, um, they would become more human to us. I work for Matt Urban Hope Center as a homeless outreach case manager here in Buffalo, covering five counties. How do you feel about going to work every day? This is absolutely the most fun job I've ever had. So coming into work every day is very exciting, challenging. Um, it's a, like a, going to a new job every day because you never know what's going to happen. You don't have a dull moment. You're never, never bored, ever. <laughs> I love my job. I love what I do, um, and I love who it is we work with. How do you feel going to work every day? Well, work is work, so some days I love to be there, and some days I'm like, I wish it were the weekend. Um, but for the most part, I really do love my job. It's really nice to see people make small successes when they find an apartment or they get a job or they get their kid in some special program. Um, that really keeps me hopeful and reminds me of the work, why I do the job that I do. Are you personal or close with anybody there? As far as clients? Like, homeless. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, my job is a little removed from the day-to-day -day aspect of the shelter life, but you, you can't help but get attached to the clients. Um, so it's really, A, important to maintain boundaries when you have a client, um, but you do. You get attached, you care about them, you want them to do good, you want to see their kids do good. So yeah, you do get attached to most people that come through the door. Do you think the homeless are being dehumanized? I definitely believe the homeless are being dehumanized because they're not spoken about and dealt with as individuals who actually have a purpose and a meaningful place in society. They are lumped together as a degenerate population, which is completely inaccurate. It does not take into consideration all the events that took place to lead them to where they are today. How do they get to that point of you know, rock bottom? I think, uh, I think people arrive at homelessness in a lot of different ways. I think um, untreated mental health issues can cause that. I think substance abuse that you're not work, um, you're not treating could lead to homelessness. And I also think a lack of support system. Like I said before, if I lost my job suddenly and I didn't get a paycheck next week and I didn't have the great family support I would, I could potentially end up in a homeless shelter. So not having like that family support or that friend support, I think is a big contributor to why people come home, become homeless. Say wages not going up to meet the cost of living makes it a lot more difficult for families to sustain 
Um, they have to have two incomes now, whereas it used to be okay with just one. Um, now our older or our elderly population who's on a fixed income, they can't find places that are affordable that leave them enough money to be able to take care of themselves and all their medical or food nutrition needs afterwards. So it's definitely the economy plays a very strong role. If you were able to help more, would you? If so, how would you help? So at Haven House, we have 36 beds, and we're constantly turning people away, even if there is a safety concern. So I think we need more shelters. I think we need more beds available within the city of Buffalo. I think working with DSS to, to up their budget. Right now, uh, a family of four can receive $450, and in the Buffalo area, that's a really hard it's really hard to find an apartment on that level. So oftentimes the women at Haven House have apartments, have cars, have personal belongings that they have to leave behind because their housing situation has become unsafe for them. So in Erie County, we have very high rent prices. So the average mean, somebody can't even afford to rent a home working 40 hours a week at a minimum wage job they're working two and three jobs to be able to afford an apartment uh, and that of substandard or subpar living. So making housing affordable, building more areas up that would be safe neighborhoods for not just individuals but families to live in. To, uh, what we don't realize is that Buffalo alone has so many abandoned houses that if we actually fixed them all up, we could probably house the entire homeless population and not lose any additional space or services for anybody here in this county. I would say having a personal connection with the population that I'm very honored to serve is a requirement to be able to serve them and serve their needs well. Our population that we work with, the homeless are experiencing a traumatic event. Being without a home, the ability to feed yourself, to be able to clothe yourself, is a dehumanizing experience. And what we do just barely scratches the surface of trying to solve the problem. To make it a little bit more personal, for me personally, it was, I'm a formerly homeless individual. And I couldn't imagine being where I am today if I didn't have people that were there when I needed them most to help me out of the situation. So, Ending homelessness is a community issue. Everybody has to play their role. If everybody did their part in extending a little bit more kindness instead of stepping over somebody, understanding why that person might be in the situation they're in, not looking down upon them, for being in the situation they are. Removing the stigmas out there, things like the stigma behind mental health or the LGBTQ community being kicked out because people don't want them in their homes. That's your child, <laughs> so I couldn't imagine. Uh, if I could go back in time, yes, there are certain things that I would change. I call them survival skills. Uh, some of the things I had to do to make it on an everyday basis while I was homeless, I would change because I'm sure people got hurt. I would change the fact that my parents and my family were hurt. Um, but I'm going to say no because the experience that I learned being homeless makes me better today at what I do for a living. When we see somebody who's experiencing homelessness steal food, we don't stop to see that they stole food, we just know that they stole. But that is what we consider a survival crime. You have to eat to make it. You don't always know where your next meal is coming from. You know, you do what you have to do. So.